Welcome back to Pole Barn Garage, ladies and gentlemen. I bought a snowmobile. Why did I buy a snowmobile? Kevin from Junkyard Dig said I needed one for reasons, so that's why I bought one. I paid 500 bucks for this 1980 Yamaha Enticer, 300 cc. I have never ridden a snowmobile. I've never even seen one in person until now. I know nothing about these machines, but I do know that this one runs. So let's go take it out and beat on it a little bit and see if we can figure out what it needs. You can tell it's not in too bad a shape. The seat is full custom. All the wear items and stuff seem okay. Again, I know nothing about this. It's like a twin cylinder, two stroke magical thing. I don't know. It looks like fun to me. Okay, the only thing to do is just hop on it, put it to the wood. There's gotta be a better way. Let's go ahead and top her off with some gas and two cycle oil. And because I'm not like a small engine kind of guy, all I have is some random little cans for like a chainsaw, but it should be enough to top it off anyway. This is a oil injection system, and I've had a few dirt bikes over the years that were just like that. You can see the 300cc twin piston, I don't know, whatever thing. It's really clean, like it's in super good shape. So I think I got a good one for something I know nothing about at least. Where does, where does the gas go? I'm sure some fresh fuel wouldn't hurt her. It's got a, a gauge on the side that I can't read. Some Lawn Boy two cycle, it's old school. Oh, it just yuked all of Man, I can't do nothing today. I don't think this is exactly what they had in mind. I noticed earlier that the throttle and brake cables were kind of stiff. So I'm just gonna try to get some lube down in there. It ain't much, it's just from sitting. Yeah, that helped tremendously already. Okay, looks like it's time to roll. Just gonna send it. Key on, I think that's the choke. Not really sure to be honest. That thing, that thing's so much fun. I was barely even going. It's got way more in it, but it's kind of scary. crap that is so much fun it's like a dirt bike with the stability of a four-wheeler i've never experienced that and i don't even have a lot of snow here that is so much fun and it handles so good it's pretty quick i think i'll recover that seat and clean her up a little bit i don't know i'll see how slippery it is now let's see if mine will start Smoking a little bit. That's a pretty solid 500 bucks. Probably. 
This thing is pretty sketchy. It is. Well, I don't even know how long it's been. Like a month and a half, maybe, since I bought this and I did that like first few clips with it. And you can tell that it's turned into storage. Like most things that sit for more than maybe three days. We got a little work to do to this. I got a month before I got to run this up with Kevin, Junkyard Digs, and do snowmobile things that I've never done before. I've got a few things I want to do mechanically, but first, why don't we wipe off some of this uh, highly expensive barn dust off of this thing. And I bought a seat cover for it, so I need to figure out how to get that seat off. Holy crap, there's a snowmobile under here. Did you know that? So that's how you pull the seat off? Yep. All these things. Yeah, the one? Yeah. Well, oh. well that was, oh. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, there's a tail light. Yeah. Okay, so there's more than one screw. Unfortunately. Hey, here it is. What? Here it is right here. There's nuts on the behind bottom. The flap. No, just one nut behind the butt flap. Right here. It's all gonna be metric since this is one of them Japanese snowmobiles. Rusty. It's like it lived its life in the snow. Aha! Uh -huh. Look, a snowmobile seat. Oh, okay, so the whole thing's made out of plywood. Wow. You might need some new plywood. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, this uh, wood is completely rotten away, which, you know, I, well, I, that's probably to be expected, I guess. But it is literally eighth inch, like, paneling. So, I, I think I have some. So I'm betting all you gotta do is just cut some around, attach it to this plastic, you know, uh, saddle horn thing here and then probably reattach it to the tail light housing here and we'll be in good shape. Fixing the seat is a priority because that doesn't look very comfortable. Demonstrate. It's a chopper now. <laughs> well, how I'm gonna clean this is just with detailer. Just a spray detailer. Get it nice and wet and then wipe it off with a microfiber cloth. Nothing really to it. This stuff claims it works on plastic, the windows and stuff like that, so. I don't know. Looks cleaner already. Uh, yeah, just soak it down and we'll see what happens. I'm going to throw you on the fast forward and enjoy. And because we never half-ass anything around here, we're going to remove the windshield so we can get to the dirt that's behind it. There's a lot of hardware that holds this thing on. You know, because we want this to look really good so I can rip off some poor sucker in the north. I mean, uh, so I can uh, look real good while I'm snowmobiling. There. Now we can clean effectively under here. Makes a hell of a difference. That thing actually looks really good underneath that. I think I'm going to try to wax it after we finish cleaning it. I'm just going to use some spray wax and see if that will bring out some of that shine it used to have. Or at least saturate that plastic so it, you know, absorbs some of it and looks a little better. So this windshield had a chrome strip on it, which is just door edge guard for a car. I don't know if someone added that or if that's factory or what, but I just happened to have a roll of black trim because I don't have any chrome. And I'm not willing to actually purchase things. You know, we're modernizing. That's what we're doing. Add this onto here and it'll look like we got a we got brand new windshield on the circuit. What are you talking about? Yep, that's that's me. I've been hustling my whole life. <laughs> I just sold that Dodge truck today, the D100. I got 500 bucks out of it. <laughs> I paid 550 for it, put 250 in it. <laughs> Sucker. So we're about done with our brand new trim. I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Now we got our end. Oh. That's how you do that for the cheap, you know, if you happen to have a snowmobile. All right, now let's try some of this random spray wax I had. Wax on, wax on, wax on, wax off. It's not a total waste of time, just a little waste of time. That stuff kind of worked. It took some of the scratches out, but I've got some new finish here I'm going to try too. Wow, that's an old jug. Oh, lots it is. Let's see if that brings any of this out. It probably just rubs it right off. We need this looking good. Polish this turd finally. Stop removing the paints. That's a plus. Wax off. That looks better. 
It does. It got some of the scratches out. Yeah, I think that's the way I'm going. We're just going to slice our way through the snow now. Folded plastics are a lot harder to bring back around. You can bring them back with a heat gun, but you run the risk of turning them into goo if you do that. And I'm, I, I don't care enough to take that risk. It'll just kind of drink up some of that. Holy cow, look at that. Man, that is looking like a hell of a snow machine or whatever the hell they call them. Thing looks like brand new in spots. Well, we've been involved in a fender bender here at one time. That's. Let's see if we can fix it. Oh, hey, that's stronger than anticipated. That's pretty thick aluminum. Oh, so uh, that stays. Let's slap this windshield back on. Tiny little bolts for this thing. Tiny little bolts all over this thing. I hope I don't actually have to end up working on this. Inside this little box in here, two spare spark plugs, owner's manual, and the baggie for it. And another key. I had a key. Don't be damned. I didn't even know it had a key. Yeah, it's got an extra key. Are these any good? No, those are old. <laughs> Statement of origin. This is from Iowa? Yeah, Creston, Iowa. I'm going to carefully and lazily use the impact to put these on. That looks really good, actually. That black door edge guard made a world of difference on that. That makes it look like new. Well, you know, except for the parts that aren't. Okay, what the hell was I doing? The seat. Oh yeah, yeah, the seat. Well, I'll do that tomorrow. Gotta go ahead and rebuild these skis and shocks, though. I think it needs them. You know, I talked to some hardcore snowmobile people, and they were like, yeah, you gotta replace all that stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, man, I know, I know. I know what you mean, right, right? There we go. Look at that. <laughs> brand new. Look at the brand new shock. See it? Brand new. Oh, look at that. Brand new skis, all detailed, polished up. That's how you uh, spend an hour and make a lot of money off of some piece of crap. Time to play upholstery shop. What we're gonna do is take our seat, what's left of it, throw it on this scrap piece of wood. And what we want is just an outline of the edge of the seat. You can see we still got this front line to work with here. So we're gonna draw off of this and then it's supposed to go something like Oh, I don't know, probably, this is probably supposed to be tucked in and screwed to the wood. So, something like that. we got just enough wood here to pull it off, I think. No reason to measure anything, really, just trace around this. There, something like that, probably. We have an outline, a template, as it were. Probably end up having to make a notch here for that. But we can do that after we cut out our basic shape, set it on there, and trace it. I don't know what good getting any kind of precise measurements is going to do us here with something that's basically just a big hunk of couch cushion. What we'll use to cut this baby out is, of course, what I think was my great grandpa's Craftsman Saber Saw from like 1940 something. Still works great. Go find me something that's built like that today. You know, we use JD's brand new mini bike that he got for Christmas as a workbench. It's closer to the outlet. There's really no other option. See? It's fine. Yeah, you didn't hurt it at all. Not yet. <laughs> I could probably just hold it. Oh, oh my god. What? They look, it looks so dangerous. I actually hold the title for uh, World's Worst Carpenter, uh, eight years running now. This is... Beautiful. Look at that, brand new. Yeah. That's pretty much right, I think. You can see where the stud was sitting on the foam at one time, right here. So it's actually moved about an inch, which means my guesstimates were dead on, as usual. Well, and by dead on, I mean Almost there. Not quite. Obviously, these studs will have to be exposed. Maybe just drill holes for them. Yeah, I, I think you're supposed to do just that. Just drill holes? Yeah. Where'd my guesstimate pencil go? Here it is. How about right here? That sounds good? Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. it right there, yep. Exactly. So we're going to drill that hole about three times as big as it's supposed to be, just in case 
I didn't just get it perfect. Quality with a capital K. Capital K? Yeah. You know, I failed wood shop in high school, and I don't really know why. <laughs> something about safety violations or something. Uh, should probably pull off the old wood, huh? Yeah. Well, well, that won't be that hard. Well, that was tough. Uh, got like one corner over here that's hanging in there. I think we need to drill out these rivets too. The rivets that hold it all on there. We'll probably not rivet it back on. I'm thinking we'll probably just shoot self tappers into it. Yeah. So it looks like we're gonna need some uh, replacement foam. The foam knife. <laughs> Let's go find some foam. There's the foam. Yeah. You have located the foam. I don't know how much we need. Oh. <laughs> oh, the foam. Oh. Give me your foam. Oh. You're ripping its guts off. Well, it's still living. Okay, so now we can take this taillight housing free. Little tangs that hold the seat cover on to it. Yeah, we'll have to bend these little tangs back out so we can pinch the new cover on. And we still got to drill out these rivets so we can replace them with self-tappers. That'll be way better. We can replace this foam with this random chunk of Plymouth Fury Sport seat I had. So you get the part that the mouse, mice, mices haven't gotten to, you know. You kind of bevel this edge here. Something like that, maybe? You're watching a master. Hey, look. I learned from the best. My dad's reupholstered all of his seats for the years doing stuff just like this. And guess what? Nobody ever knows that. Beautiful. Some might say it's amazing. Because I don't have any spray glue. Is uh, super glue it into place. Now, like something like 3M Super 77 would work way better than this. But this will work. I actually have no idea if it will or not. I'm just cheap. Put the super glue on, then we'll hit her with the handyman secret weapon here. Pull it on down into place where we want it. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, I mean, that's probably fine, actually. Wow, my hands are covered in super glue now. That's great. Really? Yeah. Why? Use this to kind of hold that saddle horn into place here. You could also probably cover that up, too. What you got over there? There, look at that. Anyway, I'm just drilling all these rivets out, and we'll have to drill the rivets on the uh, bottom of the plastic saddle horn, too. Good enough for the girls I go with, anyway. Where's the duct tape? Oh, I want to make sure this kind of... No, it's too wet and disgusting. Trying to, I was hoping I could get it to stay in one chunk, because it... Everything just kind of floats together until you put the wood in. Also, here's the template we need to cut out. This tab's bit. Is that? Hey, hey. Something like that, right? Yeah. Except for this goes over the wood. No, it doesn't. It goes under the wood. The wood goes to this. Okay, so we need this in, and then we can put the wood in. And we're just recovering it with duct tape. <laughs> Hey, we're reinforcing is what we're doing, all right? Mm -hmm. We're improving on the original design by adding duct tape. Actually, we are. It is a little kind bit of. better, I think. This little shape here, we'll chop that out. Try again. That's pretty good, I think. I'm gonna attach it up here first. Now, I wonder if I gotta cut this. Mm, no, yes. that's what we do. Has to clear the oh, gasket. yeah, dang it. Like that, then we'll be good to go. Boom, looks like it's supposed to, kind of. I'm just gonna screw down the front, we'll try to tuck the back in. I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot a self-tapper into it. There. If I... We'll add a oh additional gosh. layer of security. <laughs> Yamaha never thought about that, did they? You know, an old upholstery trick, at least when you do car seats, 
is to put a trash bag over it. That way the seat will slip over it a lot easier. These are mint flavored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you do this, you won't get as many wrinkles in your uh, vinyl. Actually, now that I think of it, I was probably I probably should have put it on the foam, then screwed it down. Oh yeah, oh. that would have been a lot better. <laughs> no. Just... Oh yeah, that looks good. Yeah, this is custom seat. Cover. It literally just looked like you're just putting it in the trash. We're gonna want to try to tie this tight. So I'll probably tape it on the edges mm -hmm. to hold it down. And then we'll go put our seat cover on. I need to pull these staples out before I forget though. Okay. So you just tuck the trash bag in like you're tucking your kids, you know, to bed. What? And uh, <laughs> then you just uh, sing it a lullaby and then your seat cover will go on about, oh, 10 times is good. rock a bye trash. The, the key here is to make the foam slippery. And then the seat cover will stretch over it much better. Install the duct tape up here to help hold it together. Look, just trust me on this, all right? There's a process. I know what I'm doing. Uh, we'll just continue duct taping. Adding more uh, resistance to the seat, yeah. you know, to make it uh, it's so much more stronger, you know? So when I do them in carves, I actually hog ring the trash bag to the seat in a couple of spots. Mm -hmm. But I don't trust this plastic enough to actually take more than the amount of staples we're going to have to put into it. I think that will actually work. Yeah. That's pretty good. Boom. Well, you look at that custom seat cover, right? <laughs> you could just roll with that. It's got texture. <laughs> it smells good. I mean, come on. Here's our new seat cover. We're going to throw it down inside out. F for front, I guess. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's it. It is yeah, cut it is. for the for the tail light. It's just folded that way. Probably want to start at the back, fold these over, and then roll it right. Okay. Sewed part here is probably supposed to end up like that, something like that. I don't know. I might be a little crooked. Flip it over and just kind of eyeball what we've got to work with here. We'll have to stretch it to fit, of course. I guess you do that, maybe hold it there, and then tie down, oh, and then pull down the sides. And then it'll, yeah. And then it pulls it taut. I guess I'll start on the back end of it. We'll just kind of wing it and go forward. I just know we want this stitch to be right on the, right on the ass of the seat, you know? All right, so I've got this attached to the tangs inside of this taillight housing. Now, I'm assuming we can stretch it forward over the front and then over the sides to get our shape. I hope anyway. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Pull it up like this. Maybe I'll shoot a couple staples into it and try to pull it on the side to see what happens. Yeah. Secure it on the front. If we wrap the sides. Oh yeah, look. Oh yeah. Work it's pretty fun. good, huh? I'm gonna shoot one here to hold it for now. Stretch both sides. Looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Right. Looks brand new. <laughs> Oopsie. Can you smell what I'm cooking? We'll get that front pulled down. We're a little off on our seam here, so I might redo that front part if I can. Overall, I'm pretty yeah, pleased with this. It looks nice. Comfy. Yeah. Cool. And there's a finished result, trash bag and all. We'll leave that on there. Maybe it'll like weatherproof it or something. It's hard to not be happy with that. Yeah. That looks freaking great. So let's go put it on. Tail light housing thingamabob in here. Kind of help hold this fabric in. I don't know. Maybe I didn't go. I don't think I went tight enough on the back. I'm going to have to revisit this. Really? Just on the back. Now the back is kind of a pain because there's nowhere to, you can't staple the back. So you only have these little tabs to work with there, like that. And the thing is, this fabric is kind of heavy and it doesn't want a good quality fabric, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it won't, these tangs don't want to cut through it real quick. I don't know if that's wrinkling, but it does what? look like it has a wrinkle. This? Yeah. That's a fold from being in the packaging. Oh. That was there. That's better. What do you think? 
Yeah, I, I like that better. I think it. You can't really see that it was that piece. Just needs to be tucked in. It should be good. That looks it's not perfect, but it, it's also kind of hidden behind that sissy bar thing. And it's fine for what we were doing. The odds of this surviving, coming home from Wisconsin, they're pretty slim. I'm, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't, I don't know if it's gonna live or not. It's probably not gonna come home. <laughs> Finishing touches. I guess it goes on probably with the letters up. Huh? Hook our tail light up. I don't think it was hooked up before. It might work. As simple as that. It looks so good. Yeah, it does. I made the seat frame too short. <laughs> uh oh. Okay, how do we hide this mistake? We warble out the stud on the back, probably. It's quite a bit off. <laughs> we need to warble it out or yeah. something. About one bolt hole off. There. there There's is. one. Yep. If we can get this other one to screw in on the front, it'll be fine. You can't tell. Yeah, you can't tell at all. Looks perfect. Try it sitting on it. Ooh. Wow. It is comfy. Nice. Instead, looks pretty rusty, so I don't want to go too crazy with this. I deem that good enough. Yeah. Well, now that we've addressed the cosmetic issues, it's time to really dig deep into the mechanical problems. So we're just going to rebuild everything right now. Put a little bit into the oiling system of it. That's the oil? Yep. Oil injection. Hmm. I didn't know you were supposed to put that in the oil. I don't know if you are or not. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Just kind of spitballing here, bud. I guess we could throw plugs in there real quick. Yeah, it won't be that hard. You want to do that? Yeah. Got to mix. Mix it all up in there. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So let's go ahead and see what the plugs look like. Probably not good. Hopefully we got a fouled plug. That would explain the uh, issues we had. Oh, yeah. Fouled big time. So that's all right. That's actually was kind of looking for that. I wonder what they're supposed to be gapped at. Spark plug gap. 30, 28 to 31. Good thing that sticker's still there. This thing's like super nice actually. Yeah. Correct NGKs back in it. Maybe just run on the high side of that gap to keep them from fouling up. Motor is only running on one cylinder. I could, believe it was. Could like a bad spark plug like that do that? Oh yeah. Pop this other one out. If it looks equally bad then it'd be kind of know what we're dealing with here. Not as bad though. See how it's still white under there? It's definitely wet, but it's not quite as carboned up as the other one. So I actually think it might be as simple as just throwing a couple of spark plugs in it. How much did those cost? $18 oh for Oh my god. And I ordered four for a very specific reason. And that's that there's extra ones in it for a reason, I think from the factory. So uh, I don't know nothing about snowmobiles, but I'm guessing we might want to keep a couple new ones in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and replace our replacement plugs here. A little bit of time and a spark plug cleaner would probably clean them up, but yeah, those are both used. New ones in here for backups, and that way we are prepared in case of emergency. Although I don't see the, uh, doesn't look like the wrench is in here, so we might have to throw a plug wrench in here. Then I say let's fire it up and see if it runs any different. Yeah. Who knows? And we'll keep all these old plugs, because the electrodes aren't really worn down on them. They're just fouled, and I mean, I know a lot of guys just pitch them, but you know, you can either uh, toss them, you can sandblast them, or you can use a spark plug cleaner. You can use a little brake cleaner and a wire brush. And, at least get a little more life out of them instead of just throwing them away, you know. Might be cheap, and you know what I'll probably do is write Yamaha snowmobile on them and throw them in my cabinet. They'll stay there for the next 30 years until <laughs> I eventually need them or throw them away. But I'll have them, by God. I'm not a hoarder. I'm 
I'm gonna call that good. The smoke is probably from the Berryman, or at least that's what I'm going to claim. But uh, I say tomorrow during the day, there's no snow on the ground, of course. But uh, I don't know, maybe we can rip it around the yard a little bit. I don't think the grass will hurt it, as long as we stay out of the rocks and stuff, you know. Yeah. I don't know, that, the plug seemed to do the trick. That runs way better than it did. What's up, bros? Gonna go take my sled out in the powder, you know what I mean? Gonna go get some of that sweet, sick powder, you know? That's right, bros. So, let's fire this bad boy up, see how she performs. I got my goggles on. I got my got my suit on. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling real good. Let's see if she'll fire up. Later, bro. I think the smoke is just the berry man we poured into the oil and the gas. Probably not the greatest idea, but it does seem to run a lot better. Okay, so it doesn't do real good on the loose gravel. Hmm. Hmm, who'd have thought? It's like it's a snowmobile. You're not a not dirt a mudmobile. Mobile. Yeah, dirt mobile, mudmobile. Well, anyway, this is where this thing's gonna rest for uh, a while until about a month from now, when uh, I'm gonna go up with a certain somebody from Iowa, and we're gonna do some snowmobile stuff in Wisconsin. Uh, this will be my steed that I bring. So. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you know, if you like the snowmobile, let me know down in the comments. Let me know. You know, I'm no Larry and Ticer, but you know, how do you how do you think I did? Huh? I don't know. Don't know nothing about them. And uh, make sure you stay tuned next week. I think we'll probably work on the Eagle a little bit more. We need to put axles in the front of it, and uh, then it's on to the step side, and it's full on, like pedal to the floor. So anyway, hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe, join the Low Buck Club so I don't lose the shop. Remember, we are the real budget channel on YouTube, and we'll see you next week.